On yesterday's show, we read testimonials from furloughed government workers who have had to turn to GoFundMe to try to pay their bills, to pay for the rent and their car, medicine and food to keep their families together while this shutdown goes on. And bear in mind, it is almost the longest shutdown in US history. We will approach that in just a couple of days. Um, many of these people are obviously extremely worried, scared about what's going to happen to them if this shutdown continues for weeks or months or a year, as Donald Trump says. And uh, since we did that yesterday, hundreds and hundreds of additional accounts have gone up on GoFundMe. So uh, again, because I think the individual experiences of these workers often gets lost among the, the gigantic numbers and the political back and forth and all that, I wanna read a few more of those testimonials. But bear in mind that these campaigns, which often seek just a few hundred to thousands of dollars to cover necessities, they've altogether raised $100,000. That is an average of just $100 per GoFundMe account. To give you an idea of how difficult it is, even with crowdsourcing, to get the money that you need. And to put it in perspective, all of those workers that have been furloughed have missed out on $1.4 billion in wages every week that this shutdown has gone on. So very soon, the amount the government workers have lost out on will eclipse the wall funding that Donald Trump so desperately wants. So first, let's uh, let's go into one example. This is a corrections officer, Brandon Tyron. He's been working without pay for the Bureau of Prisons since the shutdown began, uh, has already missed a payment on his car, worried about keeping food in the refrigerator, gas in his tank, and says on GoFundMe, you can't really sleep just wondering if it's going to get better. There's a photo of his wife and his five month old son on the page. He is, uh, has a goal of raising $1,500, so far he has raised $115. Oh my God. Uh, and that, look, I was combing through quite a few of these, uh, which we're gonna get to, to compile up many. And there were a few that had raised $1,000, $3,000 uh, that were sort of trending on GoFundMe, but there were hundreds and hundreds that had $20, $10 or $0 at this point. So later in the show, we're gonna discuss uh, some of the solutions that congressional Democrats have uh, to protect some of these federal workers as these debates about the government funding bill continue. But it's devastating to think about how many people are impacted by this because it's not just the 800,000 federal workers, it's their family members who rely on them, who rely on these people to put food on the table for their kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wish, you know, I wish there was something we can do. You know, like Well, you, I mean hypothetically at least in these cases there yeah. is a GoFundMe. There is a GoFundMe, but. yes, but I mean, it's not. That's obviously not uh, an efficient way or sustainable way to yeah. uh, help these federal workers provide for themselves and their families. And yeah. in the meantime, and I keep bringing this point up, not because I don't want to pay my federal taxes, but because I think this is an important point. Why are we paying our federal taxes if our money isn't being used for the things that they're supposed to be used for? Yeah. Why are we paying federal taxes when federal workers are not getting paid right now, when they're expected to work for free or while they're being furloughed? Yeah. This is this is unacceptable. Yeah. And so, I mean, in, in essence, this GoFundMe campaign for for various federal workers who have resorted to it. Um, is a way of getting US taxpayers to help them out during this difficult time. But yeah. you know what US taxpayers should be able to do? Have their US taxpayer money go toward what they what it was supposed to go toward, which is these federal workers. Yeah, yeah. and while you know, most of these accounts are for the individual or their family, there are people who are raising money for their friends. I also wanted to give credit to, we read quotes yesterday on the show from Johanna Petrocelli, who's a NASA engineer. Um, so she actually has set one up for her coworkers at that NASA facility and has raised uh, a few thousand dollars, I think, for that. Um, there's about 200 workers at the NASA facility now. It normally has 3,000. Uh, all but the 200 are not uh, going into work. They're not essential. They're not being paid, obviously. And those 200 are only there because they are necessary to keep the astronauts and the ISS alive while the government shutdown goes on. So, yeah. Uh, but while we continue to have this shutdown, here are some individuals I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, Tony Nicole Taylor wrote on GoFundMe, this is the wife of a veteran government contractor, said, my husband is a veteran and I'm a stay at home mom to our three blessings. He still has to report to work like many others, but no checks. We have three small kids, seven, five, and a three year old. 
doing one of these was something we never intended to, but this was something we didn't expect to have happen. We still don't know when it'll open up and things will get right. And as the wife and mom, I can't help but worry about how long this will take. So mama bear kicked in and I listened to my parents and did all that was at my means. Uh, another worker said every day is more anxiety and more stress, especially when you're a federal worker on furlough. Paycheck was very short last pay, don't even know when next check will be coming. Rent is due and other bills are due. Bills will not wait for the next paycheck if it comes in March. How is this okay? Uh, Taylor Futch, the wife of a uh, park ranger said, he has as of today been furloughed for 20 days. We have two beautiful girls ages four months and four years. Oh my gosh. We have a mortgage, car payments, insurances, groceries, diapers, wipes, formula, gas, medications that we budget for every month. We have never asked for help because we are responsible with our money, but we can only budget when money is coming in. And now we are holding our breath as we watch the politicians in DC use our family as well as 800,000 others as pawns. We have no say in this, no choice, and I'm mad as hell. Uh, and finally, Erica Gibbs says, the 2018 government shutdown has created a hardship for our family of eight. It's difficult to keep afloat as we're feeling the first effects of working without pay and now not knowing when we will receive our next paycheck. Unfortunately, in Maryland, we don't qualify for assistance such as unemployment while not getting paid. Please assist our family as we struggle to make it through this shutdown, working, waiting, hoping, and praying. Uh, by the way, uh, as I was scrolling through these, uh, people can, uh, when they when they donate, their name can appear, and they can also post comments. And most of the comments, as you'd probably expect, were uh, supportive. Uh, on one of these, I saw a comment that said, "Live within your means or get a different job." So disgraceful, you have to resort to begging on GoFundMe. Well. People I, like that yeah. are usually very unhappy individuals, so we'll just leave it at that and yeah. move on. Um, because you know, for some reason, that person thinks that it's a good idea to go ahead and insult people who are in a difficult financial situation at no fault of their own, at no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a little bit of a long point, but bear with me. Uh, so Freakonomics has this great podcast. Freakonomics podcast, you should check it out. And in one episode, they were talking about the happiness that people in Denmark feel. Mm -hmm. They're among the happiest people in the world. And so, of course, the the whole point of that podcast is to look at different economic structures, what works, what doesn't. And in Denmark, one of the reasons why their, their economic structure, which focuses a lot on social programs, works is because there's a lot of trust in the federal government. And I remember listening to that podcast and thinking to myself, what is it about the United States that leads to so much distrust toward the government? This is this is it. This mm -hmm. is the kind of stuff that, that leads to Americans not trusting our elected officials, uh, not trusting uh, you know, our leaders to actually lead and do uh, the right thing for the American people as opposed to the right thing for their own political careers. This is dysfunction in American government at its finest. And you know, just quickly going back to that comment that you read, uh, the, the insulting one. The reason why that kind of dysfunction is allowed to happen is because we do have Americans who focus on the wrong people, right? They focus and, and, and blame the wrong people for everything that's happening in the country. They'll look at their fellow Americans, mm -hmm. they'll look at people who are not in a position of power, people who are struggling, and they'll blame those people for everything that's wrong in the country. No, 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 don't punch down, punch up. Because the dysfunction in government right now is a reflection of people like you. Because you're allowing politicians to get away with this nonsense. You're blaming Americans who have no, no reason to be insulted at all in this case. Mm -hmm. Like we need to step up as Americans and we need to expect more from our politicians. We need to educate ourselves and know what's really going on. And, and we need to primary uh, people in Congress who aren't actually representing us. Like this can't keep going on. Like politics in America has devolved so much that we're now in the situation where people can't provide for their families, even though they're working. Yeah, they're working. They're showing up. They're working, and they're not getting paid for it. Exactly. Yeah, and having to resort to this. And you know, we talked about the Coast Guard, uh, their recommendations to officers that they should have garage sales and sell off their belongings while this bickering is going on in terms of the government. Uh, I want to go to one video of a federal worker who's affected by the the, the furlough. Uh, and one of the things that they're considering doing to make ends meet. 
Um, you know that the Coast Guard had put out tips to their employees that say things like have garage sales, take odd jobs, do some babysitting. Lisa, does that make sense to you? I mean, a lot of that is easier said than done. You know, and it, I mean, it, it probably will come down to it to where you could drive drive for a you know ride sharing service or and I don't know. I I just hope that it it doesn't drag on for much longer to where we will have to start selling our fa family's heirlooms. You know. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, while you can theoretically get another job, you can't do that if you're not being paid, but still working. If you're still working a full time job. It's very difficult to work another job at the same time, and that, that's a situation they're being forced into. And so while this could be resolved tomorrow, it could be resolved in six months. And maybe you get back pay, although for many government contractors, even that will not be an option. They literally will not be paid for this time that they missed. Um, but even if that's the case, if your credit was damaged as a result of this experience, that does not simply get wiped away. If you sold family heirlooms, you don't suddenly get them back. These people were gonna be harmed, and for the most part, harmed in the darkness. We'll never know exactly what ended up happening to them, what ripple effects it had through the rest of their lives, the lives of their children, and all of that. It doesn't suddenly become okay again if someday, you know, in DC they shake hands. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com/slash join.